Hello everyone. My name is Onur, a second year electrical and electronics engineering PhD student in Koç University from Turkey. I am currently working on image super resolution and compression with neural networks. Today, I am going to present our work on the computation of PSNR for a set of images or video. In this work, we will look at a very popular PSNR metric for image and video related tasks. Although it is very common to report PSNR results, that doesn't exist a generally agreed method to compute it. Furthermore, different works compute PSNR values in different domains such as RGB, space or luminance channel, and some of them do not specify in which domain they calculated it, which makes it hard to compare with the future results fairly. First, let's look at the PSNR computation. Let's define MSC as in equation 1 and PSNR as in equation 2. Here, please note that since the random field is in 0-1 range, we can write the PSNR definition without any denominator. Also, let us define a variable, MSEK, which is the MSC of the k sample. With those definitions, it turns out that there are two alternative estimates, expectation of PSNR values and the PSNR coming from the expected value of the MSC values. The first one, shown in equation 4, turns out to be the PSNR of the geometric mean of the sample MSC values. On the other hand, the second one is the PSNR of the arithmetic mean of the sample MSC values. By Janssen's inequality, we can conclude that equation 4 is always greater than or equal to the equation 5, and their difference can be written as here in equation 6. To relate those two different definitions, consider a properly trained image restoration or super resolution model. Such a model generates images with low MSC values for most of the images. However, it is very likely that we have a few images giving higher MSC values. By knowing that MSC is always non-negative, if we look at the mean and the standard deviation of MSC values and see that they are close to each other, then we can empirically model the MSC distribution in the test set by an exponential distribution. In this case, we see that those two estimates can deviate as much as 2.5 dB from each other. As an example, in figure 1, you see a histogram of MSC values of super-resolved images. As you see, the distribution looks very much like an exponential distribution, and when we check their mean and standard deviation, we see that they are very close to each other. If we check the difference of two alternative calculations of PSNR values for different number of images, as we see in table 1, the difference approaches to the estimated value in the limit. Let's look at an image comparison example evaluated by rate distortion curves. The rate is measured in BPP and the distortion is measured in PSNR. But in this task, distortion depends on the rate and the rate depends on the quantization parameter. Thus, a behavior as in the super resolution case is not expected. However, here we expect that as the rate gets smaller, the difference between two PSNR values gets bigger which can be seen by the results in table 2. There are other possible factors regarding its calculation that affect the reported PSNR values. For instance, the PSNR results would be different either it is calculated from an RGB image or from luminous channel of the image, due to the possible errors in the color channels. One other factor is the time when the PSNR is calculated. When we compute the PSNR directly from the model outputs, lack of quantization to the certain values also causes that the true PSNR is different from the calculated one. Another factor might be the resolution of the images in the test set. If you directly take average of images with different resolutions, then we might be underestimating the error coming from the high resolution image. Those situations should be reported in papers for the future studies to be able to make a fair comparison with the results. Now, let's move to the video case. For n videos, each of which has f frames, we can estimate the PSNR in three different ways. We can compute PSNR for each of n times f frames individually and then average them, or we can compute an MSC for each of n videos, find the corresponding PSNR values and then average them. Or we can compute the average MSC from n video MSC values and then compute a single PSNR. In figure 2, we can see the pipelines for those computation methods. Also, remember the equation 4 and equation 5. And please note that PSNR 2 is actually equation 4 and PSNR 3 is the equation 5 for video related tasks. These definitions are adopted by different groups. For instance, PSNR1 is the reported PSNR in the EDVR study. On the other hand, PSNR2 is used by the standards-based video compression codex. In such a situation that literature has different applications on calculations, it is hard to decide on which PSNR should be reported in the studies. For instance, in the efficient video super resolution through recurrent latent space propagation, author states that PSNR2 would be a more appropriate choice for video, but they still report PSNR1 to be able to compare results with others. As an example, consider an next frame prediction task. The results of this task are shown in table 3. For the dataset, please note that PSNR1 is around 2.8 dB higher than PSNR2. This significant difference shows the importance of the agreement on the PSNR calculation for fair comparison. Also, although the example case is for video, the Foreman and Coast Guard sequences show exponential-like behavior in their frame MSE distribution, which can be seen in figure 3, and this creates
is the difference that can be seen in Table 3. In conclusion, we recommend that the MSE should be evaluated for samples of the random quantity in the tasks. If it is an image-related task, the MSE should be calculated for each image. And for a video-related study, the MSE should be reported per video sample. This is also the reason for that we claim that in the case of N videos with F frames each, averaging frame by frame PSNR values is not a technically correct approach. Moreover, this approach does not consider the motion features that each separate video has, which also determines the PSNR range for each video. In the future, we believe that the studies need to clearly specify the way of their PSNR calculation for them to be a clear reference for future studies. And finally, we think that it's a good practice to report the variance and the mean of MSC or PSNR values, together of which may be indicative for the performance of the method or the model. Thank you for your listening and for your attention. Now, if you have any questions, I am ready to answer them.